Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So every few months then I like to do a video on this particular topic because I feel like it's important, um, especially for those beginners out there who have perhaps tried dropshipping or tried e-commerce and they're struggling and not quite seeing the results they hoped for. So I'd like to do a video like this one to kind of give across some realistic expectations, talk about some of my own struggles when I first started to hopefully make you feel a bit better about the kind of situation that your business is currently in. Um, especially because of like the times we live in with social media um, it can be quite bad or not bad or it's just one of those things that it gives across false expectations false realities of what reality actually is and not just in dropshipping it can be pretty much any niche so if we take the fitness niche for example um, people can take hours and hours and play around with different lighting and different angles to take that one perfect shot but us being the consumer what we don't see is those hours of work those hours of trying different angles different lights and depending on how you stand and kind of hold yourself can completely transform how your body looks and it creates a false expectation or reality of what people actually look like um, on a daily basis and it's the same for drop shipping people posting it's very rare you'll see people talking about these kind of subjects or these kind of topics about how they've failed how they're losing money on a daily on a daily basis but what people also forget is that dropshipping e-commerce is a business and it's just part of business. There's going to be struggles that you go through, times where you feel like that there's no way back. But it's just part and part of the nature. It's important that you hear about these things, especially if you're going to be going into a business with not a lot of money. Um, so hopefully in this video, I can kind of address some of those problems. I'm going to talk about the three core elements that you might have heard me talk about before um, to any successful e-commerce business, give you some steps and some actions to take to ensure you're doing those correctly and ultimately then try and help you be a bit more successful or at least moved forwards in the right direction before we move forward then i just want to say a quick thank you to you guys um the support of my last video which was the first video for a couple of months got a massive amount of support in fact i think we hit nearly 100 likes which is really good for my channel so i really do appreciate it um, like I said, there will be a lot more content coming, at least three to four videos per week. So please do me the favor then, if you enjoy this video, please do make sure you hit the like button. And of course, if you like my content, please do make sure you subscribe as well um, so you don't miss any future videos. And with that being said then, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is expectations. When you go into a new business, it's really good to have really good expectations, but they need to be realistic. Otherwise, they're just gonna lead to you kind of being a bit disheartened um, and ultimately lead to you giving up. The amount of people who reach out to me is pretty crazy on Instagram, Facebook, just across all the different platforms. And they've been trying to sell a product for sometimes less than a week and they're ready to give up already after a week. So to kind of put that into context or how or when I first started, if you like, it took me at least three months. Go back, check out some of my first YouTube videos where I documented the whole um, kind of first few months for me drop shipping wise show you all the numbers everything but to kind of summarize it took me at least three months before I started making any money whatsoever um, and what I did and what I recommend to everybody starting this is to start really slow Facebook ads especially can just be a money pit if you don't know what you're doing it's so easy to spend two three four five hundred pounds and see absolutely no results so just make sure you start really slowly don't get overwhelmed by how much you've got going on um, and just build things from there because if you're not making money spending £10 a day on ads you're not going to be making money when you're spending a £1,000 a day on ads so I guess the first point or tip to take from this is be realistic um, have big goals but just make sure you start slow and build up to them don't try and run before you can actually walk the next thing I recommend too is the now this might seem a bit kind of counterintuitive, but sometimes if you're spending too much time on something, it can be counterproductive, or at least it is for me. You might have seen through like the different gaps in my YouTube channel of uploading videos. Sometimes it's good just to kind of take a step back for a week, a couple of weeks. Obviously make sure you're not ignoring any customers or any things that do need kind of taken care of. But sometimes taking that step back from outside of your business um, kind of changes the lens in which you're looking at. You can look at your business from kind of like an external external point of view um, as silly as that may sound and you'll start kind of maybe thinking a bit clearer you'll get new ideas coming to your mind um, 
And alongside that as well, just make sure you keep educating yourself, keep watching my YouTube videos, and keep watching other people too. And the more that you learn and the more you can kind of be thinking about dropshipping and developing your skills, then the better you're gonna get at it. Another point I'd like to touch on is that a lot of people forget this by the way, is that dropshipping is a business. Um, it has to be taken seriously. And arguably, it's also one of the hardest things you'll ever do. I guess a good way of looking at it is kind of like the stereotypical saying, if it is a saying, is that if it was easy, Easy, then everybody would be doing it so what you might consider is required to be successful at dropshipping um, realistically it's probably 10 times that maybe even a hundred times that and a good way to look at this then it's a metaphor I've come up with um, before in the past but I feel like it kind of represents how difficult it is in reality is that the harder something is or the greater the reward that comes from something then the harder it is and the harder something is the more hours you have to put into it in order to succeed so if we take a skill for example of um, learning to drive getting your driver's license here in the UK the average person takes about 20 to 40 hours um, if you're looking at about 20 pound per lesson all in all let's say you're looking at about a thousand pounds up to four 40 hours to learn to get your driving license and because 40 hours then isn't an obscene amount of time that most people can't get hold of um, same thing for a thousand pounds then there's millions of people out there that drive whereas if you were to bump that up and say you had to put in 400 hours and 10,000 pounds obviously that makes it a lot more difficult to achieve and therefore less people would be able to obtain a driving license and it's the same thing for business the less hours that would be required the less money that would be required the more people would do it hence why there's not many business owners out there in comparison to people who work for businesses or work for companies so next time you're thinking about giving up um, just kind of take a step back and actually think realistically about how many hours you've put in how much money you've put in and if you haven't put as much as say learning to drive in then perhaps you just need to commit a bit more time if you're at the point where your business is just completely draining money then just my advice would be to shut things down if it's seen zero potential so you've spent let's say three four five hundred pounds and you've had zero sales then my advice would be just simply to pause absolutely everything go back to the drawing board watch some more videos on youtube join some facebook groups start asking some questions um, and just keep developing your knowledge about the business and with that being said then that kind of leads me into what i mentioned in the intro being the three core elements um, to any successful e-commerce slash drop shipping business um, and the first one i'm going to start with then is your shopify store so the biggest mistake mistake I see people making is they do not get feedback on their Shopify store before they start spending money on ads which is a huge mistake especially if you're a beginner especially if you have zero experience with web design then you might not always be able to spot the correct things or the adequate things that need doing before you start driving traffic if you don't have a Shopify store that is trustworthy that is professional looking looks credible there's no two ways about it you are going to fail you could be selling solid gold bars 10p to the pound but if nobody trusts your website then nobody's going to trust you enough to be able to take that risk and actually buy those gold bars even though they're getting them for 10% of the cost so just make sure that once you've built your Shopify store you can join my Facebook group for example um, anybody can go on there post their link and get feedback um, it's a really great bunch of people so do post it in there and you'll get some genuine feedback from there um, or every single week I do to subscribe a store review so just just keep entering that um, and with any luck then I'll see your saw and I'll be able to feature it in a video and give you some really good feedback. The second core element then after your Shopify store of course has to be your product. If you're selling a product that nobody's currently buying or doesn't have that desirability then nobody's going to buy it. You could have the most professional um, Shopify store in the world, you could have an awesome Facebook ad campaign but if you're trying to flog a dead horse nobody's going to buy it and again your business is just going to fall flat, um, not going to make any money. So when it comes to picking products then I'll give you kind of like the easiest two ways or not the easiest two ways kind of like the main two ways of picking products to kind of give you the best chance of success number one is trending or seasonal products this is a strategy I've followed now for the past four years and the reason I do it is because I was going to say it guarantees that your products are going to sell but nothing is ever guaranteed in business um, it gives you the highest chance of success so for example if you're trying to sell summer products in summer then it's a good match and the chances are people are going to be buying that product if you're going to be selling say LED products Products like LED dog colors um, when it's really dark out from say four o'clock during the winter when people have to walk their dog in the dark then again it's a trend in it's a seasonal product that is in demand and people have a need for it that 
certain time of year so trying to sell those products sets you up to give you the best chance of success and in order in terms of finding those products or finding the information behind those products you can use tools like sell the trend um, which is the only product research software I use myself there is a link in the description below um, and Google Trends as well and you can also use the AliExpress dropshipping center um, have a play around with that again I've done a tutorial video on that but they give you some pretty useful um, information and data too and then the second type of product you can pick this kind of applies more to brands in fact because it comes under the category of like desirability if a product is really desirable then lots of people want to buy it so for example if you're trying to sell Rolex watches for half the cost it's obviously a really desirable product because most people like Rolex watches because of the brand people know how quality they are people know how expensive they are so they're a desirable product um, it doesn't just have to be watches of course it could be clothing it could be Hugo Boss it could be Louis Vuitton it could be Gucci it applies to any single niche and the single most easiest or most effective way to build desirability for your product is to use an influencer hands down if you ask me um, the reason being is because influencers have audiences loyal audiences that watch them on a regular basis or engage with their content on a regular basis so they trust the words of that influencer so when an influencer recommends a particular product instantly the audience or the majority of the audience is going to trust that influencer's word and therefore it makes that product more desirable the third core element then that I want to finish this video on don't make this video too long this is kind of like a brief summary of what they are if you want me to dig deeper of course just make sure you leave your comments below um, I do read every single one so if there is one or two that keep cropping up I can make a video on a specific element but the third element then is your marketing campaigns whether it's Facebook whether it's Google whether it's Instagram you have to make sure that you're targeting the right audience you have the right creative um, that's going to get that attention um, across social media social media is a crazy busy platform and people aren't always on there um, to buy things they're usually on there to look at other things watch funny videos watch memes talk to their friends spy on their friends so when they come across an ad that's asking them to buy something um, they're not necessarily in that buying mood so unless you have an ad that really captures somebody's attention and is really specific to them so they have that connection then they might not always notice it and therefore your conversion rate is going to be really low this is why when you hear me talk about product selection or talk about it being a skill or picking products for a specific platform um, and I guess to kind of give you a good example of this then is if you were to advertise a sofa on Facebook and try and sell a sofa because of how expensive it is because of how broad it is it pretty much applies to anybody who has a house or a home um, then you're not going to get much success because it's such a broad product and nobody is really passionate or that excited about sofas or at least nobody I've met anyway whereas if you were to try and sell a sofa that was say had like printed dogs on or printed pugs on and you're to target people who own pugs then that particular sofa is going to get so much more interest and attention because it's different from normal sofas there's like a funky element to it there's a unique selling point and you're advertising it to an audience that has a passionate kind of um, obs not obsession but kind of connection with it people who own pugs own pugs because they love pugs so if they see a sofa that has pugs on that sofa then instantly they're going to have that connection the sofa is going to be more kind of stand outish and it's going to get a lot more attention basically and you're going to have a lot more success so that kind of that's kind of like a quick way of illustrating how important it is when you come to picking products and how important it is when you're targeting audiences and with that being said then guys i'm going to wrap the video up there i have absolutely no idea how long i've been talking to this video could be 10 minutes long could be 20 minutes long um either way i hope you enjoyed it i hope you've stuck with me if you have thank you very much please do make sure you hit that subscribe button um, and hit that like button before you leave and then one final thing too if you are looking for a Shopify training program that comes with my full support and guidance um, amongst a few other different support resources make sure you check out my Ecom Academy there'll be a link down below in the description there is a callback service too so if you want to hop on the phone with me and just ask me any questions you want before joining we can do this um, and yeah that's that being said thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one